My name is Ben Deeb. I'm a science teacher in Southern California with a background in environmental science and geology. I'm going to show you how to make a few projects to help your students learn about plate tectonics. Now the first thing that's really important to know when you're studying plate tectonics is that the earth is made up of different layers. Now at the center of the earth we have the core. The core goes from the center of the earth out to about 3,400 kilometers. Beyond that is the mantle. Unlike the core, the mantle isn't all the way solid. The mantle is uh, liquid. It's actually liquid rocks, magma. Um, some of it behaves kind of like a ductile solid, but that goes about another 2,900 kilometers up. Now above that is the Earth's crust. That's the part of the Earth that we're all on right now. The crust, even though it's the part we know best, is only about 1% of the entire Earth's capacity. Now making a model for students to help understand this can be very useful, and you can do that with just a few things. First, you'll want to take a little rock. It can be a rock, it can be a round ball, anything like that. That'll represent the Earth's core because it's solid. So you take the Earth's core, the little rock that you have, and you surround that with a bunch of clay. You roll that clay into a ball, and that clay will represent the mantle. So once you have the clay around the rock, that'll be your mantle, and you want to take a little bit of water and wet the outside of the clay. That'll make it a little stickier because we're going to add some soil. Now the soil you can just sprinkle along the outside and that will give it a nice kind of brown powdered coat and that will represent the Earth's crust. As you can tell, the Earth's crust is a very small part of the uh, total volume of the Earth. After you've done that, a good thing to do is to take a knife and cut a cross section out like this so you can actually see the core, you can see the uh, layers of the mantle, and then you can see the tiny little layer on top of that soil representing the Earth's crust. A good plate tectonics model can be made from everyday objects. For example, if you just take an orange, it's easy to make a model of the Earth that will easily demonstrate plate tectonics to your students. You're going to want to carve your orange out into little plates. These will represent the Earth's plates that float on top of the mantle. Now, you can see on this orange I've already cut some out. Uh, they can be any shape and size you want. It's better if you make them bigger, just so they're easier to fit together. But they will fit together around your orange like a 3D round puzzle. Um, underneath you have the actual orange fruit and that'll be like the mantle. And you can show your students that when you push the pieces of orange skin together, they will push on top of each other. That would be like mountain building if you're pushing them together. And then if you push them apart, that could be like a divergent boundary where the plates separate on the Earth's surface. Um, this is a good model for just demonstrating how the plates fit together around the Earth's surface and how they interact when they push together and pull apart. Another plate tectonics project you can use with your students is explaining plate boundaries. Now plate boundaries are where two plates meet. We call areas along boundaries faults. Those faults are an area where there's a joint between rocks. Now there will be a few different types of interactions at faults. Uh, you can use wooden blocks like these to demonstrate those reactions. So right here you have what's called your hanging wall. That's the one that goes up and your foot wall that goes down. These are the two areas of rock that meet at a fault. Now there are three basic types of motions that can happen here with these faults. When they push together, it goes like this. That is called a thrust fault. Um, it thrusts up is a good way to remember that. Now when they pull apart, usually the hanging wall will slide down the foot wall like that. That's called a normal fault. It doesn't mean that they are actually normal and there are more of those types of faults than any others. Um, but it goes with gravity, so it seems like it's kind of normal that way. The other type is if you have a transform boundary or a strike slip fault. The strike slip fault will slide back and forth like that. So instead of pushing against each other or pulling apart from each other, they're sliding back and forth. So you can use just two pieces of wood to demonstrate all of those different types of fault interactions. One good way to explain plate tectonics to your students is to show them a map of the actual plates on the planet Earth. Now here you can see we have the North American plate, you can see the outline of North America right there, um, and it meets right here with the Pacific plate. That is actually the plate boundary that a lot of Southern California is on. Los Angeles is actually on the Pacific plate, which is moving against the North American plate. As they're sliding back and forth against each other, that is what causes earthquakes when those plates will smash into each other. To demonstrate how these plates actually fit together, you can have your students cut out along the lines of the plate boundaries and make a sort of puzzle out of the maps. Um, so you can see here, this is the 
North American plate. It doesn't exactly fit the continent, so it's good to have the continent outlines on there if you can find an image with that. And they can try to take all of the different plates and fit them together where they go. For example, the Pacific plate right here will fit nicely with the North American plate, and they can piece back together the puzzle of the world using those cutouts. My name is Ben, and these have been a few school projects for students on plate tectonics.